أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وأصحابه من استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers sorry for the delay the computers getting lazy can't wake up for the fajr you know takes two to four time to wake him up so inshallah we are almost the end part of surah al-an'am and before Ramadan we have only two more weeks after this week so we will be inshallah finishing the surah as you know the surah has 165 ayahs so we'll, go, we'll do a few uh, almost 15 ayahs today and then we'll have probably around you know 20 ayahs or you know 17 ayahs left and then from there we can we can you know finish and you know start a new surah after the after the Ramadan so without further ado we'll start the the the, the ayahs for today uh, the ayah number 128 before I start this one before that you know as you, as you all know that the Surah Al-Anam we've been going through and you know sometimes the same message has been coming up repetition and we mentioned the reason because this is a surah that is for the end time of the Makkah so where Rasulullah is at, at the age of his the dawah in Makkah and this is the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving a lot of warnings to the people of the Quraysh you know saying that you know this is not right and today I as you will see Allah will mention some of their practices some of the you know, jahili practices they used to do and how Allah will prove them that these are wrong that they what they're doing and they're thinking this is good that is not the right path so Allah in this surah Allah give him message to the Tawheed and Allah call him to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah brings on the point of the uh, judgment day because that is the main part of the belief that you know if you believe in the judgment day there is a the punishment coming what you're doing now then you will rectify yourself so Allah talking about here about the jinn and uh, Allah mentioned it here that even the jinn also will be have has judgment as we all know and this is one of the place in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referencing the jinn and talking to the jinn in the in the judgment day directly so Allah is saying on the day when he will gather everybody together and Allah will ask O assembly of the jinn many did you mislead of men meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that to talking to the jinn saying you in the world you have mislead a lot of people a lot of human beings as you all know that the jinns are shayateens you know one part of the jinn, the biggest part of the jinn that uh, uh, roam around in this world are shayateen. They are the army of shayateen. And they, they you know, try to mislead people by giving them waswasa. So Allah saying, you have done this so. But some of the people at that time standing with the jinn, they will say, you know, they will say, Allah, it's not only them. Because when people will see the truth in judgment day, everybody will tell the truth. Nobody will try to cover up like we do in the world, okay? So even the people who did come, they will admit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, yes, we did this one, give us another chance, and we can, we're going to go back. So the people, some of the men will say at that time, when Allah is blaming the jinn, they will say, no Allah, it's not only them. Even we did waswasa to other people. We used one another for, you know, uh, to you know, mislead ourselves. So they are, you know, you know, admitting that they have done the same. And that's why, you know, we know that, you know, Surah Al-Nas, Allah says, Minal jinnati wa nas, at the end. Because it is not only jinn. It is from the men also who gives you waswasa. So and then Allah is saying to them, so, okay, you have admitted your, you know, your crime. So he will say the fire will be your dwelling place and you will do it therein forever, except as Allah may will, certainly your Lord is all wise and all knowing. Should I make it bigger maybe? And thus we do make the Zalimun, uh, the awliya of one another. So Allah is saying, you know, the Zalimun, so the, the wrongdoers are each other, they are, you know, uh, awliya, meaning friends of each other. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now, in the next time Allah is you know, addressing both jinn and mankind. So Allah says, oh, assembly of jinn and mankind, did not there come to a messenger from you against, amongst you, reciting unto you my verses and warning you? So Allah is telling them, you know, didn't you get, you know, messengers, the Nabi and the Rasul among you? And from this ayah, some of the scholars say that because Allah is addressing jinn and mankind together and asking about the prophet, so it means that, you know, even the jinn probably has prophets among themselves. But that is a minority opinion from this ayah. But, you know, most of the scholars say, no, that all the prophets are human beings, as mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that has the most stronger proof. And as you all know, the Rasulullah was sent to both men and jinn to the whole world. So, you know, so uh, this is probably Allah is asking for them, that, you know, they are, uh, the Rasul for everyone. Then Allah said, you know, so they came and they warned you. But, you know, it was the life of this world that deceived them. 
So the reason that they didn't follow the, the messenger is the life of this world. And Allah mentioned this concept in many places, in the, even in Surah Al-Mulk and you know, other surahs, you know, Allah mentioned the, the, the life of the you know, Surah Al-Kahar, that the, this life of the world has deceived them. They heard them, they saw the messenger, they know the message, but you know, they are so busy with the worldly life, they didn't follow the, the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will bear witness against themselves. So, you know, as the previous I said, they are admitting their own crime. So they will be witness of their own self that they were the disbelievers. Then Allah said, this is because your Lord would not destroy towns of the wrongdoing while their people were unwell. Meaning, Allah saying that Allah never sent a, 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 a punishment to a, to, a, to a nation without sending a warner. So, you know, even in Surah Al-Bani Israel, you know, if we go, you know, read the Surah Al-Bani Israel, in Ayah number 17, Allah said, you know, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِنَا حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا Meaning, uh, I have never sent, never sent my punishment until I send a warner or a messenger among that nation. That's what Allah mentioning here. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, for will be there a degree according to what they did. You know, وَلِكُلِّ دَرَجَاتٌ مِمَّا عَمِلُوا Meaning, Allah is saying, Allah has ranks among people even for the disbeliever allah has ranks so we cannot just you know blame okay he's kafir he's kafir he's kafir allah saying according to their deed you know muslim and non-muslim allah has ranks not ranks according to your money not ranks according to your, your physical feature and then as we all know allah saying well daraja every one of them has a daraja as a rank according to what they amilu meaning what they have done you know, even so, you know, maybe there are disbelievers, even for the, even in, in another surah, in Surah Al-Ali Imran, if you remember, there was one ayah where Allah SWT says, even the people of Jahannam, they have their own daraja. They have different labels. Not everybody is going to obviously have same kind of punishment. Not everybody will be there for forever. So, you know, Allah mentioned it here that, you know, Allah has ranks among themselves. And your Lord is rich. Uh, so Allah is saying, I am rich, meaning I am ghani and full of mercy. Why Allah mentioned these two things together? Because imagine if a person is Ghani, Ghani is not only mean rich actually, it means that you know, one who is self-sufficient. He doesn't need help from anybody else. He, he can do anything that he wants to do. But even after that, Allah is full of mercy. You know, although he doesn't need us, but still Allah is full of mercy. And if he wills, he can destroy you. And in your place, make whom he wills as your successor as he raised you from the seed of the other people. So Allah is saying, you know, if you don't follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like Allah destroy other nation and bring a new nation, he can still do that. And surely that which you have promised will verily come to pass. So Allah is saying, you know, whatever message you are getting now, about the akhirah, about the judgment day, about the sin that Allah is describing, definitely they will come past, they are the truth. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell your people, say, O oh my people, work according to your way, surely I am too working in my way and you will come to know for which us will be there happy. So in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling Prophet uh, that, you know, the Makkan people, even after you gave so much message, so much dawah for the last 10 years or 11 years or 13 years, they are not listening. So tell them now, declare them, they can do whatever they want to do. Just like, you know, lakum dinukum waliyadin. And that's what I'm saying, and you are doing your own work. You are doing, you are building up your own team. You are building up your own believers. And now there's a time coming that you have to make a hijrah from Makkah to Medina. You know, so Allah is saying, you do your work and tell them that they will know that how wrong they are and they will be end up, you know, they will be never be successful, you know, in the hereafter. So Allah is just telling them the message and they, they assign to Allah to share the fields and cattle which he has created. Now from Ayat 136, Allah will mention some of their jahili practice at that time at Makkah. So it's a bit hard to understand for us because this is what they used to do. I'll try to simplify. So whatever Allah is saying here, you know, when the Quraysh used to have uh, like time to harvest, like they used to have some grapes or any kind of crops and cattles, okay, like they have, uh, you know, like uh, camels or, you know, the cows, the sheep, whatever they have, and they have different kind of crops and plants, they used to give one share to in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they used to know who is Allah, okay? So they used to part of it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rest, they used to give it to their small gods, the, the other gods they have, like Allah and Uzza, you know, all these gods they have. Then they used to say, because Allah is so great and Allah is unseen, we can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they also believe, they never had an idol for Allah. We mentioned it before, you know, in, in the history of, you know, mankind, nobody has ever made an idol of Allah because Allah is unseen, so, you know, so, and even the Quraysh, they had Allah as unseen. They know that Allah is on the top, you know, and these gods are helping them to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or something like that. So they're giving a portion to Allah, but the, because Allah is unseen, they used to take that portion. They say, oh, Allah doesn't need this because he is unseen, he is great. So they used to give it to the other 
other idols. And when they give it to the other idols, basically, I mean, obviously idols cannot do with this crops and land, they will use themselves. So it's just, it's just like they're covering up themselves, you know, they're just doing a you know, work around, you know, because they want these crops and cattle for them. So first they show to the people who are giving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they take it from them because he cannot be seen, and then he give it to the other idols and they use it for, for themselves. And so too many of the mushrikun as their partners have made fair seeming they're killing their children. And then Allah mentioning the another practice that they used to kill, you know, as we, in our time we call honor killing or something, they used to kill their children, you know. So in the name of Allah and in the name of other gods, you know, especially the you know baby girls as you all know that. And in order to leave them to their destruction, and if Allah had will, they would not have done so. So leave them alone with their fabrication. Meaning, Allah saying these are, these are all practices in their own own you know uh, fabrication. They made by themselves. So you know, forget about them. Allah telling Prophet Muhammad Sallam, you know, let them do what they were doing. You have given your message, and that was enough for them. Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and according to their claim, they say that such and such cattle and crops are forbidden and none should eat from the, except those whom we allow. So, you know, again, even that, uh, the, another practice is that they, they can't sell cattle, they given to the, the idols, as I said, they take it back to themselves. But even they take it back to themselves, they made another ruling. Okay, because it came from the gods, so not everybody can eat it. Only the higher people, like, you know, maybe you can think, like, you know, in their time, who are the, like, religious people at that time, like, you know, Imam and Sheikh of their cultures, they used to give them one. And they say, uh, a burden and cattle on which the name of Allah is not pronounced lying against him, he will be compensated. So Allah said, so they used to lie against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making this culture. And on the next time Allah said, and they say, what is in the bellies of such and such cattle, even Allah also saying the such and such cattle is uh, for the males alone and forbidden for our females. So you know they used to say, you know, some of these animals, so Allah didn't mention the which name, so some of the animals, some of the plants, they say, this is only for men. Female cannot have it. But if one of these animal has a fetus in their, in, in their tummy and they die, the dead fetus can be eaten by both female and male. So these are all like their, you know, you know weird, weird practices at that time. So Allah, Allah saying clearly, Allah knows all of this is fabrication and he's all wise and all knowing. Indeed, lost are they who have killed their children foolishly without knowledge and have forbidden that which Allah has provided for them. So Allah saying, I made these things halal for them, you know, and they are allowing people not to have it. Male can have this one, female can have this one. So this is Allah saying, no, this is all wrong because I know what is halal and what is haram and what is I have provided for them, inventing a lie against Allah. They have indeed gone astray and were not guided. Then Allah say, and it is he who produces gardens, you know, different kind of dead palms, crops, and different shape of taste. Allah saying, in all the fruits, all the plants, all the animals is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They eat different, we eat them also different way. You know, the way we eat banana, we don't eat the same way the apple, you know. So Allah saying, every fruit has a different taste, different way of eating, and it is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then say, but pay the due thereof on the day of its harvest. So Allah is indicating the the concept of zakah here. As I said, this is the end time of Makkah. Allah is saying, when you harvest these halal things, you know, the, all these crops and lands, you know, and, and plants, give a portion to the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, may give them in charity, and that is a part of the zakah, and this will come later on in, in Medina life, you know, when zakat will be, will be obligated. And really, he likes not a musrifun, meaning Allah is saying, don't spend from your harvest too much. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say this here? Because in our time, we get our salary or paycheck, maybe fortnightly, weekly, or monthly. But for a farmer of that time, or any businessman even at that time, they used to get all of their earnings in one season of the year. So like this is the harvest season, that they used to get everything together. So the, the whole year of money, they get it in one time, basically. And Allah is saying, if you have this everything together, and you spend everything, that is not good, because Allah said, Inna Allah la yuhibbul musrifun. Allah doesn't like whoever you know, spend too much you know, out of the way. And then, uh, the last time for today, and of the cattle are burdened, and some are you know, burdened like sheep and goats. So Allah is saying, some of the camels, they carry your burden, like you know, donkey, horse, camels, and some of them are farashun fil ar, meaning they love the uh, basically, it means that they love the ground, meaning there are some animals who cannot carry things, like, you know, rabbit, turtle, they, they walk on the, guard, you know, on, the, on the ground, you know, as if they are you know, hugging the earth, but they, can, they are not made for those things, okay? So, they are different animals, and Allah is saying, you know, 
uh, they have food, they give you food, milk and other stuff, eat what Allah has provided for you. Okay, eat what Allah has provided and do not follow the footsteps of shayateen. Surely he is not an open enemy. Now, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, if you remember that Allah talked about halal food, you know, Allah said, Ya ayyuhannas, you know, Kulu mimma razaknakum halalan tayyiban, you know, oh, oh, with mankind. It is ayah number 168, and from 168 to 170, Allah mentioned some of the halal haram food at that time in, in Surah Al-Baqarah. First time Allah called everybody, Ya ayyuhannas, then I said, I, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu. And whenever Allah mentioned halal and haram food, Allah said, no, eat what is halal, I made halal. Allah said, do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. So there is a relationship between halal and haram food and between following the footsteps of shaitan. And Allah mentioned it not, no less than two times or more than three times in the Quran. Can anybody tell me what is the relationship between haram food and footsteps of shaitan? Why Allah mentioned the footsteps of shaitan with haram food? Do you have any idea? You can, you can think of anything? What is the relationship between you or you know, you know, people consuming not halal food and following the footsteps of shaitan. What is the relationship between shaitan and food, eating food? Anybody? Can you imagine? One of the scholars said it's a very interesting thing because shaitan, he started his career by providing haram food to Adam al -Islam. That is his first job. If you imagine, when shaitan was being rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he became a rajim. He came and the first job, he started his career by doing what? By telling Adam, eat from that tree. And that is, that is the, the haram for him. That's Allah forbidden for Adam and Hawa. That's the only thing was forbidden in Jannah for them. And he started his career by giving the, the food that is not provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what Allah said, no? And that was the footsteps of shaitan. So whenever, you know, the, the, because then that's how it's, everything started. So your income, your food, if it is not halal, it's all haram, everything will be haram. As mentioned in the hadith of Prophet you know, even your dua won't be accepted if your, if your rizq is not, is not halal. Inshallah ta'ala, we'll finish it here. Jazakallah khairan. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha. Astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk.